can I'll, I'll read out the attendance. Okay, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Just give me one second, it's still transitioning to live stream. Okay, you guys are all set to go. Okay, is there a flag? <laughs> Do we have a flag for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? You guys are all set to go. In your mind's eye, Karen. Okay, because the last one, some, I don't know, the screen became a flag. <laughs> okay, uh, I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag, the United States of America. America. And to, and to the Republic, Republic for, for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, public participation. Karen, before you go into public participation, can we do a roll? Can I read the roll for the clerk? Yes, please. So attending is uh, Diane Stone, uh, Karen Brecker, Shalene Pender, Terry Lapenta Dufik, uh, Kathleen Sobieski, and Sandy Nafis, commissioners. Also in attendance are uh, Dave Nagel, our town council liaison, and uh, Commission Member Cory Maureen Lynch and Clerk Gail Whitney. And I know uh, Jamie Trevathan and Barb Wilmer from the center staff, uh, I believe are also on the call. Yes, they are. And our host, Heather Shanti. Take it away, Karen. Okay. Um, public participation. Does, um, it's nice to see you, Barbara. Um, well, I guess we have none. Dave, do you wanna say anything? Is there anything? It's been a long time. Oh, it's been quite a few months um, um, in relationship to the, uh, the council and the Senior Disabled Center. Uh, we appreciate uh, the Senior Center and Diane sending out, uh, giving the, all the work they do in that and the weekly call-ins, which we receive, and it's much appreciated. Um, I do listen to the whole message, Diane. I want to let you know. It's that important. Um, and um, also, um, we have been waiting for a facilities uh, survey study to be completed. The first part of it was presented to the council um, at our last meeting. It does include things that need to be uh, repaired. And on that list is uh, the Senior Center. Uh, I believe, Diane, later you may refer to some things about this, uh, but uh, the, uh, including the windows that I, at the point they were looking at them needed to be repaired. Uh, that may still be ongoing. I know money was, uh, was found for doing at least part of that. Uh, and also on that list was a uh, chiller, which the air conditioning system, which uh, I understand is not uh, functioning. Uh, and uh, there may be one other thing on there too, but they, they are on the official list of things that do need to definitely be taken care of. Um, as you know, the town council has a capital improvements project committee. And uh, between the last time we met and now, uh, that committee uh, has uh, decided uh, under the special circumstances that uh, since there's some confusion about projects and when they're duly given and not uh, that, uh, this year, uh, the uh, town manager with department heads would determine uh, what uh, should be uh, handled uh, 
in terms of uh, CIP, and uh, it will be brought before uh, the council, including anything from the, the uh, Senior and Disabled Center uh, uh, at the appropriate time during the budget. So the, the full council will go over whatever those uh, needs need to, and if they need to be or can be included in the budget or not at that particular time. Um, uh, we've been getting been given on the council updates in terms of COVID at the last meeting, things didn't seem to be very, still very positive, but there may be an update uh, that Diane may share with us uh, tonight. And uh, also uh, I've been asked by my wife who is uh, on the CERT team that there is um, supposed to be a clinic uh, in the near future, uh, in fe February 11th and 18th at the Senior Center. And just wanted to know if Diane knew anything, whether since there's rumors about vaccine not being available, uh, what that happens to be. And Diane, you may wait until whenever is appropriate if that's on your agenda of things to, uh, uh, to talk about. So that's, that's all I have at the moment. If anybody has a question, I may be able to help you. Any questions for Dave? No. Did you want me to move on um, past public participation? I don't see anyone called in. No. Okay. Uh, yes, 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 I don't see any, I wouldn't see anyone. Okay. Um, approval of minutes from September. Does anyone remember reading them? <laughs> Uh, I did read them. I, nothing stands out in my mind and I'm kind of stuck down here in Florida. So I don't have any of my notes or anything with me. So um, just my memory, which is going. So um, any comments on the, the minutes? No? Okay. Staff report, the best part of the meeting. Diane. Yeah, I have nothing new to report. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, there, there is a lot and um, we haven't met since September. You have been getting some reports. Um, when I think about how many commission meetings I've done in what, 22, 23 years, um, typically the reports follow a very similar format and I'm updating you on, on what we're doing. And honestly, in almost a year, um, this is not the same place and it's not the same operation and everything is different, including some of the people. Uh, our mission is the same and that is to improve the well-being of older adults and adults with disabilities in the town of Newington. Um, we continue to work that mission uh, every single day, but things look different. So I'm going to go through kind of what we're currently doing um, and where we're going. And it might give you a sense of kind of what the center is right now. Um, so it, kind of looking at it in terms of accomplishments. Um, first of all, I, I will jump right to the big issue of the um, time and that's with COVID vaccine um, and the announcement of the state moving into phase 1B uh, with people age 75 plus. Um, being able to make appointments. That's taken up a considerable amount of time. And part of that is because the rollout of the vaccine um, is really messy. And that's nationwide, it's, it's international, it's nationwide, it's Connecticut. Um, and, and that's unavoidable to a large degree. Um, when we think about the flu shot clinics and how you know we've gotten them down to a science, we know how to, with public health, we know how to inoculate people. And this is not like that at all. Um, there's a cold chain issue with this vaccine. So it can't you know, come over in one big box and be, there's issues with how it has to be maintained and how it has to be stored, how it can be used and so on. Um, there's social distancing involved. So when I, remember, when I picture the clinics that we did you know, 15, 20 years ago, where we had hundreds and hundreds of people coming into this center, rolling up their sleeves and, and getting a shot. That's not how these work at all. People have to maintain social distance throughout. You can only have so many people. Um, there's also an observation time because it's new. Uh, people can't get their shot and walk out. They have to sit and be observed for a period of time while being socially distant. 
But the biggest part of it is there's a real scarcity on the vaccine. Connecticut, um, it may be going up, but Connecticut was getting 46,000 doses of vaccine a week for everybody. Um, so when that went through 1A with all of the emergency people, um, the systems were set up. And, and part of the system is that every vaccine site has to meet requirements. They also have to have a way of registering people for it, scheduling them and reporting them. And there's all kinds of different systems for that. And, and each vaccine site kind of developed their own system. Plus there was the, the statewide systems. So it was just really messy and really confusing. Um, as we move into 1B and those 75 plus people are able to get vaccines, uh, a lot of it is, is internet dependent. And I would not say that most people 75 and older are not online, a lot of them are. Um, but even if you're online, it, it, it was a bit confusing. Um, so we worked a lot with our partners uh, across the state and um, through the Aging and, and Disability Services Department. My battery is running low and that's not a good thing. Um, so we worked with them to, I have to get this battery because it, it doesn't give me a good forgiving time. Um, we've, uh, quick, quick, quick. Okay, we're safe. We're not safe. There we are. Okay, so, um, We've been providing guidance for people to get an appointment. The best option for people to get an appointment to get their vaccine is to go to ct.gov slash COVID vaccine. Um, there is a link on that that says 75 plus. When they go to that, it will give them the options available to them. Um, the best option is to go to the vaccine locator tool and 211 info line is hosting that. You can put in your zip code and find all the clinics in your area. You can filter those results if you don't have online access and you need to do it by telephone so that it'll show you clinics that you can call. And then you call them and you make an appointment. Um, people are getting appointments. When we talk to people right now, we're, we're hearing a lot of people who either got their own appointment, family member made an appointment for them. Um, the VA has offered them an appointment their healthcare provider, Hartford Healthcare or UConn has contacted them and made an appointment. Those are the best options is to get them in those clinics. Um, if people have the uh, availability and the option to go to the Pratt and Whitney, um, uh, the clinic that's there, it's the largest clinic. It's the easiest one to get an appointment and it's drive-through. So you don't have to get out of a vehicle. It's safer and it's, it's more convenient. So those are the best ways to do it. That's how we're finding that people are doing it. Um, uh, Councilman Nagel did mention a clinic. Uh, the Central Connecticut Health District is responsible for vaccine uh, access in our area. And they had applied for vaccine um, before and didn't get it. They did apply and were able to get it, but they are getting a very, very limited dose. So we wanna be very, very careful that we're not telling people there's going to be a vaccine clinic at the senior center because that people people think about the flu shot clinic and think that's okay then I'm going to get an I'm just going to go to the senior center to get a, get vaccine reality is that we're going to be able to vaccinate a maximum of 50 people there are six there there are like 2000 people 75 or older uh, 1500 people 75 or older just registered at the senior center so we are use, we're scheduling people based on a prioritized list of people that we've identified as being transportation dependent. So they don't have options of getting to a clinic uh, or otherwise at the highest risk. So the oldest people come in first. Uh, we're working on that scheduling now. So if somebody calls and says, can I get, it, can I get on the, an appointment to get a vaccine? The answer is going to be no we're working through a, a, a prioritized list. And as we go down that list, um, a lot of people are finding their appointments somewhere else and that's what we're encouraging them to do. Um, not to take up one of those 50 spots if they are able to get somewhere else and we'll help talk them through how to get somewhere else. 
Um, so I think that's where we're at with that. I think we're moving into um, 65 plus getting their vaccine probably in the next couple of weeks. As that happens, it'll be the same thing. Uh, people shouldn't be waiting for the clinic to happen at the senior center. It's not the annual flu shot clinic. Um, right now we know that CVS and Walgreens are starting to stand up clinics. Those are all gonna be your better options than waiting for a mass clinic to open up in a town building. So um, I hope that that's clear. I've been telling everybody, I, I want my vaccine shot. Um, I hope that people are, are signing up and getting it because we'll get through this a lot faster the more people that get vaccinated. Uh, sure. Okay, uh, I've had my vaccine and I went online and got tried to get an appointment. I had it from March 3rd on New Britain Avenue. Hartford Health called me because I have my chart. And she says, she called me on last yeah. Thursday. She says, can you come in Saturday at 10? I said, sure. <laughs> I went there, yeah. it had to be five minutes yeah. early. I was like number three in line. I got right in, I was back in my car like at 17 minutes after. She had to wait 15 minutes after. It, it was in and out, we yeah. were just moving them around. Thanks for sharing that because a lot of people, and I don't know who else has had their shot, but that's what we're hearing the experience is that mm -hmm. once you get in there, it, 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 the start of it was really messy. And we created this, um, you know, a lot of anxiety about, I need to get my shot right away. And it felt like the Hunger Games, um, but it, it's starting to smooth out. And I think as we go along, it's gonna be um, a little bit better. When the 65 plus population is eligible, there's gonna be a push again, but eventually we're all gonna get our shot. Um, what messaging that we're trying to send out um, that kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit is whether or not you've had your vaccine, you still need to follow those uh, four W's. You need to watch your distance, you need to wear your mask, you need to uh, wash your hands and you need to do something else that starts with a W. Jamie, do you remember what it is? Wear a mask, wash Wear your hands. Mask, wash your hands. <laughs> watch I your distance. I don't remember now. I don't know, but do those hmm. things. Um, because it, it, once we can't start relaxing with things like that. Um, so we really wanna start encouraging people again to do those things. So that's what I wanted to say about vaccine. This is taking up a lot of our time and a lot of our, our energy. Um, and it's really, really important, but I wanna talk about other things that we're doing too. Um, so looking at nutrition, and that was our immediate focus on, on um, you know, back in March, and we've developed our systems and we're good with those. So just in the month of January, Meals on Wheels, we delivered more than 820 meals um, to up to 59 people a day, Monday through Friday. We are very happy that we've brought back volunteers and have even recruited some new volunteers um, to deliver Meals on Wheels. Staff pack the meals, nobody comes in the building. Staff do all the packing of meals and sorting, and then the volunteers are taking them and delivering them, which has been, um, I'm not sure we would have been able to continue if we didn't bring back those volunteers. Um, our congregate meal, we've, uh, in January, we did over 1,100 meals to up to 50 people every Wednesday. Um, some of those people, most of those people come and pick up their meals. It's my favorite day of the week because I get to see people. Um, and dial a ride is delivering the rest of them. We have our grocery shopping program. Um, that continues very steadily. And in January, we did 32 trips um, worth about $1,400. Since we started that program, we have purchased um, over $17,000 worth of groceries. Uh, volunteers have gone out and purchased to deliver to people, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, and we have steady volunteers who've been doing it all along. Some drop off, we add a few more on, but it's, it's been run very, very smoothly. We're also uh, helping human services with the food pantry, doing deliveries there. Um, so we do several, um, several deliveries every week and it's Dial a Ride doing that. Uh, talk a little bit about our programs. Um, our programs obviously look different than they did before because people are not coming in here, but we kind of are still focused on the same things. So we do high tech, low tech, no tech programs. Um, the low tech programs are telephone based programs. So we do things like meditation Monday and boggle on Wednesday. 
Um, we also have bingo on Tuesday and Thursday. And they have steady followings um, that the people are, are attending these programs every week. They're building community within these telephone programs. Um, I wanted to, uh, I, invite, I asked Barb Womer to join us today. Of course, you've all met Jamie Trevithan. Um, Barb Womer is our new part-time program coordinator. So when Denise Haas uh, left and Carolyn Elsner, our part-time um, secretary left, um, Jamie transitions some of her responsibilities to the administrative coordinator role. And we were able to bring Barb Womer on part-time to do program coordination. Um, and we gave her right from the start, kind of two big initiatives. Uh, one was to do a fitness program and one was to do a uh, social telephone call program. So Barb, can you unmute and just tell us a little bit about those and say, hey people. Hey people. <laughs> um, yeah, so the um, the exercise program is meant to be done at home for those people that, you know, maybe missing their normal exercise program at the senior center or the gym or just wanted to do something besides walk outside. So I just took a very simple exercise program um, and took some pictures and uh, made an instruction booklet with simple instructions and we gave them a fit kit, uh, which included a pedometer, a TheraBand and a small ball similar to like a stress ball and just gave them exercises that focused on strength, um, flexibility, some eye-hand coordination. And they had a choice of uh, one or two programs. One was completely in the chair and one was the chair plus adding some standing exercises. So that went out to almost 50 people. And I check in with them the first two weeks after they get their fit kit to see how they're doing and make sure they don't have any questions. And then um, I do a monthly call, which we're about to have our first one tomorrow, uh, where they can just call if they have questions or concerns, um, and I'll give them some, some tips and updates um, if they're interested. So we'll see how that, that goes. Um, the second uh, was to tackle social, uh, social isolation. And the one program that we have established already is called the Daily Call Sheet. And that is actually it comes from the Motion Picture Television Fund which has a social call program. And I believe that when the pandemic hit, they opened up this program for free um, to organizations that wanted to learn what they were doing. So we uh, took advantage of that. And uh, I went through a training and then I trained some volunteers uh, who are now calling on a weekly basis, uh, one or two recipients. And we, we did four volunteers to do a, like a pilot test to see how that would work out. It worked out well. I just completed a second training with three more volunteers. Um, we're doing background checks, <clears throat> excuse me, on them. And then they'll be calling one or two uh, recipients on a weekly basis as well. And I talked to the recipients and the volunteers and they both are loving that, that weekly call. So it's, it's all going very well. Uh, we're about to uh, start another program called uh, Zero Isolation, Building Socially Integrated Communities. It's a program that was developed by a professor at Quinnipiac. And again, I went through a training with that. And that is a group that meets once a week, normally in person, but of course now it's virtually, uh, once a week for about 90 minutes. And the purpose of the program is to provide an opportunity to participate in a program that's designed to specifically reduce social isolation and increase social engagement. Um, I, I have uh, in my training taken part in one and, and I really, really liked it. It was great to see the group gel just like many in-person groups do. Um, the key elements of the program are to uh, provide knowledge about social aspects of health, including social support, social networks, and social isolation. Um, the participants also learn how to recognize social isolation while taking part in learning activities uh, such as group discussions, case studies, games, and reminiscing activities. So we are planning hopefully in March or April to do uh, one of these groups. We have some intern students that will be trained to be what we call navigators. And they have a support role with the technology, but also in, in helping the participants if they need, have extra questions or whatnot. So I look forward to, to doing that for the first time this coming spring. Barbara, where are you getting the volunteers? 
The volunteers uh, for the daily call sheet program uh, were our members up until recently, uh, one one member, or I'm sorry, one volunteer saw an advertisement in the Rare Reminder and he's not a member, but became a, a volunteer for the program. So they are members of the Senior Center. Jamie had handpicked the first four volunteers, knowing that they would be committed to it, knowing their personalities. Um, and then the next three kind of, you know, came along as we had advertised the program. So is that something where you could maybe use some high school students? So like we're actually going to use those college intern students for that as college, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, um, we could maybe use high school students, but there's training that's involved in it. Um, and like anything that you do, right, there, there's um, some risk involved in it as well. Um, so one of the, the reasons we started slowly was we had to figure out how we did background screening because um, we had to do that with people. But we actually do have some other program um, ideas coming up that would involve high school students. Um, and I don't know, Barb, if if we're far, far enough along to have any progress report on that or if we're just still I, at I a conceptual. Yeah, so I talked to um, someone from the English department at the high school who's extremely interested in an intergenerational pen pal program. So uh, we both agreed that this could be beneficial for both generations. And she's really excited to start it with a coworker. So we talked a little bit about details, not sure if it's gonna happen this school year, just because it's February and you know their school's gonna end in a few months, but there, we might be able to do it for a short time, but definitely starting in the fall, uh, some sort of uh, program that'll have guidelines where they'll you know, have a minimum number of times that they need to reach out to um, their pen pal and maybe have some prompt questions to uh, help them write their letters, et cetera. I, I think that they're very excited about it at the high school and I am too. I think this would be a great program. Yeah, it's not only just a great program for COVID, but there's a lot of people that are stuck in their homes and it would be wonderful for them as well. Yeah, so all of the stuff that we're doing now, I mean, this pandemic is going to end at some point in time and the world may look different and we may be wearing masks, um, you know, for longer than we think. But I don't think anything that we've learned or that we've developed goes away because there were always people that were isolated in our community. Um, there were always opportunities and I'll talk a little bit about the collaborative things that we've done outside of the center. But there were always opportunities for those to work. We just never got to them because of what we were doing. So this really forced us to stop and say, how do we do this different? And man, we're building better mousetraps all over the place. Nothing really replaces people being in a room together, um, but there are things that we can do that we'll continue to offer uh, that will just enhance experiences for everybody. So we can look at I mean, this COVID as a positive thing because you know I've always advocated for those that are stuck at home having done home care. Yep. Um, I just see so many sad cases and I just, I'm loving this. So thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. And You're all welcome. the volunteers, yeah. it's just um, great. It's also the kind of program that we can scale it up as we need to. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what, what's coming up uh, moving forward, we have some big things happening and all of these programs kind of feed into that. They build our capacity for that. Um, we're also doing a Tai Chi Quan Moving for Better Balance class. Um, that's when we typically do in-house, but we've been doing it virtually. Um, it's a 24-week class. So um, interestingly, the, the instructor for that, it, it's a, a lot of um, training to be certified in that. And mm. the instructor that we had doing it um, she actually moved out of state, but because we're doing it virtually, she can still lead the program. So, oh, that's uh, awesome. you know, I'm happy to continue. Yeah, we didn't lose our instructor, even though she's in Pennsylvania somewhere. Um, and she's very we also good did a too. Couple. She is, and she's been uh, at the center longer than any of us. So, um, we also have done, um, and I'm going to talk about our, our moving forward together, kind of our model for programs. But we've had some um, special Zoom programs. Um, the American History Lecture Series continues. We've done some Healthy Brain um, Series programs with Hartford Healthcare. Um, 
I talked about doing no tech program. Those are our high tech programs. Our no tech programs are our drive through programs where we invite people to come to the center. Also where we send out things. So we send out activities in the food bags and so on. Um, but we had a um, special drive through program in January to celebrate National Hat Day and National Bagel Day. So uh, participants came in, we had our hats on, they came in wearing their hats and some people decorated their cars and everybody got, uh, could order a bagel and get a bagel. So um, we continue to do that. Uh, our social services um, are as busy or busier than ever. So right now we're in the middle of energy assistance intake. Um, that's the low income heating and assistance program. And Karen Halpert manages that. Um, it's, she's always had a tremendously heavy workload in this program, but now she has to do everything by mail. Um, we have a drop box, so people are bringing things in. She's making copies, she's, getting, she's doing a lot by telephone. It all takes a lot longer, um, but she's keeping up with the demand. Um, we also are doing client services. Uh, Terry is doing everything that she normally does. Um, including assistance with applying for different funds, uh, with uh, SNAP benefits, Medicaid benefits, doing wellness checks, um, and so on and so forth, and, and Meals on Wheels applications. Um, in terms of transportation, um, it may seem like Dial-A-Ride is not operating. It is, but it's not just a, a passenger transportation service anymore. It is now a delivery service. So when we do a program, for example, um, if we're doing a craft program, we're delivering supplies to people. So they're engaged in that. They're doing a tremendous amount of food delivery. Um, they're also doing passenger transportation. And right now we're still doing those me medical trips. Um, we're hoping to expand one day, but it's, the time is not right yet to do that. So they're able to take up to two passengers at a time. Um, and they're probably taking about 10 people a day to medical appointments. Our out of town transportation is also still operating. Um, in terms of what's coming up and, and what we're kind of planning, there's two major initiatives or there's two major umbrellas that have initiatives. Um, the first one is um, town wide and it's, it's called Operation Outreach. Um, we're doing that in, in collaboration with Human Services and the library. And this was um, following a directive by the town manager that asked us to do, develop a telephone network to reach every older adult in Newington three times a week, which I love when people throw out really big, challenging, absolutely impossible goals. That would be about 20,000 calls a week. Um, in the spirit of that though, we said, so how can we reach every older adult in Newington? And we've de we're developing an approach. Um, the first part of that approach is to do a, a, a mailer. Um, so we're working on that now and uh, essentially, it would be a six page trifold, um, six side trifold mailer that, that will go to as many older adult households uh, in Newington as we can identify, that will include information about what we want people to do in order to survive this pandemic and, if not thrive, at least to continue living. Um, that includes safety around COVID. So getting your vaccine and, and keeping yourself safe. It includes staying um, food secure and economically secure. So making sure you get access to the services and the things that you need. It includes staying connected. So we wanna talk to people about the importance of staying connected and how you have to, to actively and purposefully do things to connect with other people. Um, I, you know, at the beginning, I think we had people who said, it's okay, I don't need to join a Zoom program, I'm going to ride this out, who now maybe mm -hmm. would like to join a Zoom program, because it's not ending, right? Nobody predicted it would be this long. So we want to give people information about that, and about staying active, because we know that a lot of people staying home has health risks, um, that you're not replacing the physical activity that you would have been getting pre-pandemic. And for some people, that's an exercise program. You know, I can't go to the center for chair aerobics. What am I going to do? But it's also that activity you get just from moving around the community. So we want to talk to people about that. Um, included in that will then will be resources and, and suggestions of things 
people can do and how to contact. So, you know, programs at the library, you can take programs online, Parks and Rec has programs. We wanna give people all of that information. That's the first step of Operation Outreach. We hope to have that sent out by the end of February. Um, then we're going to be making um, phone calls and it'll just be calling a, a broad group of people. We've done this over the last year where we've taken a big list of people and we've just started calling. And we're calling to say, did you get the mailing? How are you doing? Um, you know, do you need any help with anything? Um, what are your, how are you going to plan to stay healthy? And from that, we'll identify people that may be at, at a higher risk that we can start referring to programs like the daily call, daily sheet, daily call sheet. I want to rename that program every time I say it, the daily call sheet, um, zero isolation. Uh, we want to start doing more direct invitations to programs. So that's our approach with uh, Operation Outreach. Um, we do hope to hit almost every older adult in the town of Newington. But I think that there's people on this call that are older adults in the town of Newington. And not everybody needs us to contact them on a regular basis. So we want to find those people who um, could use more contact. Uh, the second one is something we're doing at the center and it's called um, moving forward together. So when we sat and thought, what is it that we want people to do? We want them to keep moving. We want to not keep saying, put, putting things, framing them in negative terms. We want to move forward. We don't want people to keep thinking about what we're doing right now. Uh, and we want to do it together. So it's moving forward together. And that's a framework for the, our programming for the next, um, I don't think, I don't know that we put an end line on it. Did we say how long we were doing this for, Jamie? Um, we're going to, the, the, everything that we're specifically planning right now brings us into about mid-April and then we're going to reassess and see how we move forward from there. Okay, it'll be longer than that. Um, so there's, there's a couple of different parts to moving forward together. Um, one of them is um, doing program kits. And these are programs people can do at home. They'd have some connection to us. Um, either it could be phone calls that we make about it. Um, it could be a, a Zoom gathering that we do about it. But we are going to be doing six different program kits, um, including bird feeders, uh, writing journals, organic indoor window garden seed starting kits, uh, Adult paint by number, um, uh, sugar cookie baking and decorating, and mini terrarium kits. So um, these all come with a cost. And when we get into purchase requests, um, I'll, I'll give you the request on this. Um, the total cost of all of these kits, though, is covered by CARES Act funding that we're going to get from um, aging and disability services. We have to front the money though, we have to make the purchase first and then we get reimbursed, but it's already been approved to be reimbursed. Um, so that's gonna be a purchase request is, can we spend money that we're getting back as soon as we spend it? Um, that's a good kind of purchase request. That's the first part of moving forward together. The second part has, and, and that's the um, no tech. That's the one that people can access without um, any kind of technology. Um, we're going to have Zoom programs to stay connected. So we'll highlight a health-related Zoom program every month. Uh, we're going to be doing the Great Courses. Um, the Great Courses is an organization that has all kinds of online classes. We did it years ago when they were still VHS videos. And I think we did one on um, American presidents and it was like a 12-week class. So we're going to um, be offering some of the great courses for people. Um, and that requires us purchasing a license, which is well within our program, it's $350. Um, so that's within our, our program funding. Uh, we're also gonna do some Zoom coffee hours hosted by center staff, just general discussions, chats about what's going on. Um, right before COVID hit, we had started a regular feature, except we did it once. Um, that was a, Jamie, what did we call it? Um, it was an ideas forum and it was exactly one Idea. week before we closed down the center. Yeah. And we yeah. were going to do it every month. Of course. Um, but we, we'd like to get back into doing something like that. Just, you know, every, every, um, program, every program now feels like it's has to be so purposeful 
but we wanted to do something that can just kind of be that general conversation again. Um, so we're gonna be doing those. Um, programs to get and to stay active, we're gonna do a walking campaign. Um, so a walking program that um, we want people to start taking steps again. And we actually, I, I mentioned to Barb the other day, can we find out how many steps it is from the middle of the parking lot to the main office, to the cafeteria and back? Because that's how many steps somebody would take when they came in the building. Um, but we wanna start getting people to um, walk and have them record and report their walking, how long they walk to us. We'll track miles um, using pedometers um tracking devices or we're not putting tracking devices on people it would be like the ones that you already have on your smart devices um and or count 20 minutes of walking as a mile so each week the total number of miles will post them on social media um so we'll be providing uh pedometers to people that want to do that and getting people moving um we also barb has done the, the move to improve program um, that's people get a fit kit so they get a, a book and they get a, a band and they get a ball and they get an instruction sheet and they get some phone calls, but they're doing it on their own. Um, people miss programs like chair aerobics that we used to do here. So uh, we are going to record three exercise programs that are gonna then be aired on, on NCTV. And Barb is gonna be doing that. Thankfully, we got somebody with an exercise background. Um, yes. So she's gonna be doing move to improve chair exercises move to improve chair and standing exercises and chair aerobics. Um, so we're looking forward to doing that. We even thought um, maybe we can bring socially distant um, guests to be in the program. So maybe we can get, you know, the mayor to come and sit in a chair and, and be in the, in the video. We're not sure about that yet. So um, she can refuse to take my calls and not ever have to talk about it if she does. Um, and then we're also gonna be doing um, more information and outreach. So we're gonna do a special edition newsletter. Um, we do our newsletter every month, but we wanna do a one-time three to four page newsletter um, that we mail to all of our members. So right now our newsletter is available online. We have some people that have asked for it to be mailed. Um, our distribution system used to be, we would leave piles of them in different places around town. That doesn't work anymore. So we're gonna do that one-time mailing um, and that's to about 1300 people, I think. Um, we'll be doing program flyers and we'll be doing more follow-up emails, robocalls and Facebook postings. Um, so that is the moving forward together um, approach. So now you know about that. Um, we are also doing some statewide and regional collaborations. So um, I'm currently the president of our state association and we've been having Zoom calls, sometimes monthly, sometimes weekly with senior centers across the state. And we're getting 90 people participating in this, which is unheard of um, for a level of participation. Um, one of the things that we've been working on is a virtual senior center. And we have a very small planning team that's Newington, um, Brantford and... Woodbridge or Woodbury. One of those? No. Oh, Woodbury, sorry. Yeah, Woodbury. Yeah, Woodbury. Um, and we're working with the Connecticut Healthy Living Collective with a little bit of funding from AARP. Um, we started out doing a Tri-Town Virtual Senior Center just with those three communities. And we did an exploration series. So there were three Zoom meetings. Um, then in December, we did the, um, the C Statewide Senior Center Holiday Bash. And we had attending that 70 different senior centers participating. Uh, we had about a thousand participants. So this was an entertainment program. Um, we, part of the virtual senior center is there's lots of, of different communities, it's all virtual, but something in the program has a local connection to the senior center and its participants. Um, the holiday bash, that was a gift bag that we distributed to each person who participated. Um, and then they could watch this program that included greetings from all kinds, all of the state's constitutional officers. We had um, a flamenco uh, guitarist. Um, we had the Yukon Huskies women basketball team um, singing Deck the Halls. 
Uh, we had, uh, we didn't have Loretta, Loretta LaRoche. We had Gina Barreca um, do a 15 minute talk. So there was all kinds of entertainment. We had a Ledger High School chorus did something. Um, it was really, really entertaining and, and the feedback from it was absolutely tremendous. So building on that, we're now um, doing five programs, February, March, April, May, June, five programs, one a month um, under the Virtual Senior Center. And I think the next one coming up is the um, Connecticut Science Center. It's a discovering DNA kind of um, hands-on solving mysteries with DNA. And um, I think already there's over 30 senior centers that have registered for that. So like I said, the stuff that we never did before that we knew was possible, this is one of those things where we can get higher quality programming. These programs cost money, but either it's being funded by somebody else or if we had to contribute to it, it would be much less than we would have to contribute uh, if we did it on our own. And it still has that local connection. Um, which is always really important. So we're excited about those programs moving forward. Um, the tax aid program, um, we are moving forward with that. It's modified, as you know, you might remember last year, we were um, you know, well into tax prep and we had to cancel all of the appointments. Um, this year, it's going to be a limited program um, how they're doing it is uh, people are signing up and I think they can only take 12 people per day. And usually there's far more than that. Uh, usually there's five an hour. Um, people will come in to the front parking lot. One of the volunteers will go out and get their paperwork, bring it into the building. The other volunteer will scan it all and then they bring it back and give it to the person. Um, the taxes are done. The person will return to sign it. The person coming in, the person getting their taxes done never leaves their car, um, doesn't come into the building, and they're only able to uh, take appointments for people that had their taxes done by the AARP tax aid program last year. So people that had an appointment last year that got canceled, they can't help them because they can only do it for people whose information is in the system from last year. So uh, we started taking appointments for that on Monday. You might recall we also had a blizzard on Monday. Um, and we took about 45 uh, calls for appointments then. So we're already halfway through booking up all of those appointments. Um, administrative things, uh, I think we're, we're getting through. Um, we submitted our budget request to the town manager and we've had our first budget review meeting. So the, the town's budget is in process. I will tell you there is nothing new in our budget. Um, the only changes were uh, things like our fitness equipment. We didn't request funding for it this year because um, we didn't use it. So we don't need to replace anything this year. Um, and any other changes were things like the cable bill went up. Um, so our personnel is gonna look different um, because we don't have the same staff working here. Um, in terms of the facility, and this is pretty much the end of my report for anybody who's going, oh my gosh. Um, we did get the parking lot done. We have the nicest looking parking lot in the town of Newington, bar none. It's a beautiful parking lot. I almost hate to see people driving on it. Um, <laughs> the windows, uh, that project is being scheduled. So the town did get a steep grant for that. Um, that's funding from the state that covers part of it. Part of the funding comes from um, town funds, but I believe that that project will be done in this fiscal year with money from this fiscal year. Um, the windows in this building are really old. They're very inefficient. We've got leaks in places. It's one of those things that it's time to replace the windows. Um, the HVAC, um, so in the, uh, in the project um, to identify all the CIP needs in town, our HVAC ranked relative ranked very high. Uh, that is because it does not work at all. So we went through last summer with no HVAC in half of our building. Um, now, we didn't have participants here. Um, so it, it, you know, it's manageable, but it was the half of the building that staff work in. Um, so we did relocate people and, and it was a very uncomfortable summer. 
Um, so that project I believe is, is high on the list and it will be in the CIP request, I hope. Um, and I do hope that council approves that. I think it's about a half a million dollars, um, I think. And it, it's one of those things that you have to replace your HVAC when it doesn't work and it simply does not work. So um, the interior of our interior of our building, as we walk around and look at it, it needs some work. It needs to, to get freshened up. Um, it hasn't for quite a while. And we need to prepare for one day being open and letting people back in the building. So we'll work with the town. Um, some of that means a fresh coat of paint in different places. Um, you know, we've talked over the years about the, there's so much brick in the walls here. Um, maybe it's time to paint some of the brick and, and brighten the hall, hallways up a little bit. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is um, some of the options for things that we'd like to purchase um, to brighten up the hallways. So we can talk about that in the purchase request section. And I think that's the end of my report. Back to you, Karen. I think we just lost her. We did lose her. And our vice chair is Maureen Lynch. Um, Maureen, you can't see the screen, but if you can take over the meeting till Karen gets back. Uh, uh, we're on old business. On old business? Yeah. I don't have an agenda, so I'm sorry. I, I, I will tell you. It's old business, and the first item is purchase requests. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so purchase requests, things that we would like to purchase um, include for those bird, uh, for those program kits, um, the total cost of all of the kits actually is $3,600. Um, $2,500 of that would be paid by CARES grant funding. Um, that's the CARES Act money that the state made available to senior centers. Um, it, it, we, the restrictions on it, it is it had to, to be used to purchase something related to our COVID response. So these program kits fit into that because they help with social isolation. Um, so uh, Jamie, we were looking for permission to purchase. Karen Brecker's calling me. Jamie, we were can looking. I, can I interrupt for a moment? I have yeah. a meeting. I have another meeting that I have to go to that I've been reminded to for the town. So I will have to leave at this point. I'm happy to have been here uh, for the amount of time I have been here finding out what's going on. So thank you. Thanks, Dave. Our Councillor Nagel. Hi. Um, Jamie, were we looking at um, the purchase request of the 2,500 or the, the entire amount? We were looking at the purchase request for the, in the document that you have with the kits that were over the threshold for um, the commission to consider. And then 2,500 of that would be reimbursed by the act. And then I believe also okay. part of that same request was the mailing. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong thing, that's why. Diane? Yeah. I lost, I lost, I lost the Zoom. Is it everybody or is it just No, me? it's just you. And I have you on speakerphone. And okay. um, I've asked Maureen Lynch, everybody can hear me talking to you. Um, and I asked Maureen Lynch if she could take over our chairing because she's the vice chair. Um, can you get back in? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm trying. Okay. If it's okay with you, we'll carry on with the meeting and you can at least hear what we're saying. Okay. Okay. So you guys okay. could all hear that. I assume that Karen is on the phone and her, she got cut off. Um, okay. So we're looking to purchase um, for those program at home kits. Uh, $2,500 that will be reimbursed by the, the uh, CARES Act funding. 
So we're asking for permission to purchase, to spend $2,500 on that. Um, not so one item take cost. Well, there's no one item that costs twenty five hundred dollars. It's that's the total. Um, so they're all separate purchases. So we need a motion, so right? Yeah. yeah. Would somebody make a motion? Yeah, this is Sandy. I move that we authorize the um, twenty five hundred dollars needed for the kits that will ultimately be reimbursed by the CARES Act for the center. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor? All right, he's on the call. Need a second. Go push him off. Hi. Hi. Andy has taken over. Huh? Karen. I'm a low tech person. Okay, so Karen, can I hang up my phone? Yes. There we Sorry. go. That's okay. We learned that this is how Zoom programs work, and you roll with it. So. Um, so you had a motion and you approved it or you seconded it? Yeah. I didn't hear any nay, so it's approved. Okay. So the second thing, I'm just making sure we still had quorum. Um, the second thing is, Gail needs a second. Oh, yeah, nobody seconded it. I'll second Terry LaPenta. So you have a second, all in, now you can ask all in favor. Um, Aye. All in. Maureen, Karen is back on the call if you want her to take over, but she has to unmute. Yeah, have her take over because I can't see what's going on. You know. You know. You're not, you're still muted, Karen. Ah. There you go. Okay. All right, so I, I missed something. It's $2,500 for the kits. Yeah. That'll be reimbursed by the CARES Act. Yes. And okay. um, you had a motion and it was seconded. So now you're asking any questions? Any discussion on the matter? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. So carried. Um, the next item is printing costs for the special edition uh, newsletter for moving forward together. And the estimate for that for 13, 1,300 copies, four page color is uh, $1,375. May I have a motion um, to approve that? Yeah, this is Sandy again. I move that we approve the printing of the special newsletter and all associated costs with that. I second it. 1875, does that include the mailing? No. So do we want to add that in? Amy? I'm looking at Jamie and she just doesn't know I'm looking at her because we're on <laughs> Um, I don't know where that falls in our budget. It would be, we just do a It'd be somewhere with our with our postage. I think it would be the mailing would be somewhere around six hundred dollars. But I'm not exactly sure where that falls within our budget, and if we if that would go towards us or towards like the town's postage budget. Yeah. So you could have your motion say including any um, postage, any necessary postage costs not covered by another budget by another fund. Okay, I think I said an associated cost, so I'll say um, I revise the motion to include any postage um, associated with the mailing that may or may not be covered in some other account. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> or we could just up it if you think it's around 600, maybe make it 2000 just in case. Yeah, we have the okay. money and it's for the good of the seniors and I'd like to spend it for them. So do you okay. mind amending, Sandy? I'll amend it again to sure. uh, $2,000. Is that the right number now? Um, I, I move that we, um, off, we pay $2,000 for the newsletter and uh, associated mailing costs as needed. I like that better. 
Any discussion? No? There needs to be a second, though. Oh, oh I we have second. To have it. Sorry. I'll it's Terry LaPenta again. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. So carried. Okay, the next item. Um, I appreciate we have more items than usual, but we have not spent money in about a year. Um, I talked about the, the building and freshening up the inside of it. Um, part of that is the artwork that's on our walls um, has been here since before I was here. And it, it's not very live, lively. So one of the things we've wanted to do for a long time that we, we uh, wanna move forward on is to put vinyl indoor banners on the walls that are bright colored, that um, have good imagery on it and that fall in with our themes of um, the dimensions of well-being. So these would be things that, um, you know, could be motivating and, and appealing. Um, so we're looking at 24 color banners. Each color banner is about $40. So that's about a thousand dollars. It's 960, but I think there's a design cost um, that would bring it up to about a thousand dollars. And that would give us eight per hallway. So I'm having trouble visualizing this. What are these banners like? So they're, they're two and a half by six. So two and a half feet wide and six feet tall. And on the banner, it would be a printed banner, um, you know, the, a vinyl banner that on it would be, um, and we haven't done the design work, but we have dimensions of well being that talk about being physically active, about being emotionally healthy. So we would put imagery on it for that. And that could either be a picture you know, a picture of somebody being active, pictures of people eating healthy, or it could be um, graphics of, of that. And those would be in the hallways and they'd be colorful um, they in would be all of the, you know, so they would be spread out through the hallway. And they could be changed. Is that the idea? Yeah, you could buy a new one. You could buy a new one for $40. I think we would look at those being static though. Um, but they're not, you know, you can pay a lot of money to get wall hangings like that. These ones would be um, a little bit more economical. So if we wanted to add more or to change them, we could. Okay. Um, what kind Are we of taking those sepia paintings off the wall? Would anyone like to make a motion? Um, I can do it again. Um, sure. Um, I make a motion that we authorize um, the, the center to purchase um, wall hangings for approximate of uh, for one thousand dollars. Is that the right? That's right. To yep. help cheer up the center. And Sandy, since we're a team, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Kathy Sobieski, were you trying to say something? Because you're muted. No, you're still muted. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, when you said the, the $40, so have you, is there a certain company that you've gotten this quote from? Is it, you know, is it a, is it a local business in town that would be making the banners? Like, you know, the, uh, uh it's Vista print. Pardon? Vista print. Vista. So it's an online Jamie. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's oh. an online company. I did shop around and look at prices at various places. This was the most economical and their banners that are designed for indoor use. I'm sorry. It's very loud in my house. Um, there's banners designed for indoor use only. So they're not gonna be like the heavy duty outdoor ones, which is why the price is lower. Um, we use local um, printers for a lot of things, but in this case, that Vista print was the most economical choice for what we're looking for. Oh, okay. I was just curious what, you know, if it was somebody that was a town, you know, company or not, if, you know, for the, for the costs and stuff. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we try for the very most part to purchase local. 
Um, but there's some things that, that you order out. Um, so you still are need these, to take- Are these something that are being used in other senior centers? Is that, no? You know, I can't say specifically. Um, I've seen, seen a lot of other senior centers and they all look a little bit different. Um, but I have seen centers that are using bright imagery and, you know, it, it just looks a little bit more modern. Um, it's a little bit more motivating and um, it's, it's helping you to message the things that you want people to do in the way that you want them to um, engage in the center. So they're all custom designed? Yeah, we'll design them. Oh, okay. In fact, we talked about, we talked about um, whether we could recall uh, your marketing friend to help us with. Oh, she would love to help. She asked me what's going on in this center all the time. You can give yeah, her a call. So we actually had a conversation about uh, recalling her and seeing if she can help us with the design. We're looking for something simple, right? Nothing too complex. So and you could spend thousands of dollars on this stuff. So the banners yeah. are vertical. So you could imagine walking down the hall and seeing six or eight vertical banners in a row, brightly colored with bright graphics, showing the different dimensions of wellness. That's what we're envisioning. I'm having trouble envisioning it, but I think if I saw one and I'm sure they're fine, you guys have good taste. So, and we need to do something um, and they're not that expensive. So if we want to change them or replace it, it's not a, a problem. So. Um, right. So let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Okay, so carried. Okay, one more. Um, the only program that really continued this year was the garden. And you can't garden virtually. Um, although we're doing a garden at home kit. Um, so we had a, a couple of volunteers, very few people that um, made the garden work this year. Um, the, they have two um, relatively inexpensive greenhouses that they use, you know, to store pots and stuff, but also for hardening plants and protecting them. And both of them got wiped out in uh, winter storms. So they have no greenhouses. Um, so we've uh, sourced two six by six carbonate greenhouses and they're available at, at a bunch of different sellers, but they range three to $350 each. Um, and with those, you need cell shelving. So we'd look at 12 units of wire greenhouse shelving uh, at $30 each. So that's about 360. Um, I wanted to point out that a lot of these purchases are under the $500 threshold. Mm, I was so, wondering. Yeah, we don't, but we kind of said, here's the project. And the project total cost is um, between 960 and 1060. So we decided to bring them to you anyway, because it's a project and rather than, you know, piecemealing it out. Um, so we'd be looking at doing that for a total cost. I would put the total cost at 1100 to cover it. Okay. Jamie, is polycarbonate the soft-sided or hard-sided? I don't know. I could look it up. I don't, I'm not sure what it is. There, um, I believe it, it's different than the ones we have now, which have like the plastic green, plasticky um, exterior. The sides have, are more dense and solid um, and clear yeah. rather than green. And then the construction itself, I think is the polycarbonate. I'm not sure though. Okay. We wanted to get something that was a little bit more secure because um, the ones they had out there just totally got decimated. Uh, can I have a motion? motion. Um, I make I'm, a motion. Oh, go ahead. I make a motion that we approve $1,100 for the purchase of two greenhouses and the shelving and any other associated products that need to go with it. I don't know if you need nails or screws or stuff like that. But. <laughs> must come with it. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? 
I love the garden. I don't know how many of you have seen it. I love it out there. I actually, didn't we have lunch out there, Diane, one day? Yep. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, and, and it might be an area that, you know, when we're not open yet, that we may be able to have limited meetings and stuff. So uh, we're happy that that all the sidewalks got done in there, uh, back there this, um, when did they get done? In the spring, just before the, spring, the season yeah. started. Okay. Um, I, can I, I'm sorry, Diane. This is Terry. I just looked up. Polycarbonate is strong and flexible. It's 30 times gotcha. stronger than acrylic, and 200 times stronger than glass. So it is a strong material. So hopefully they'll they'll last a little longer. Okay. So can I? Can we vote all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So carried. Okay. I guess that was uh, under purchase requests. Old business. Uh, any new business? No. Everything is new business. Every day <laughs> is new business. Every day. Okay, the agenda for hopefully a March meeting. <laughs> anything added? Do you see anything happening? I'd like a report on the, oh, the budget is May, isn't it? Isn't that approved? When uh, is yeah. The Jamie, do you remember when the budget is done? The budget is typically approved in mid-April by the town council. So it'll be going to the council at the end of this month for consideration and they start all of their budget meetings and they usually approve it mid-April. Okay, so that wouldn't be for March, but if we don't meet in March. Um, so I guess it stays the same, Gail. And there's no public for public participation unless Barbara wants to say something. <laughs> and um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? <laughs> a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so carried. And everyone, please stay safe. Yeah, we, we, have, we, we have feats of snow here, Karen. So you stay safe there in sunny 